Methanol poisoning and fire are the two main risks that have to be managed by home distillers. And in this video I'll talk about fire safety. Ethanol is flammable with a flash point of around 13 degrees centigrade and even in cold weather it's likely to be more than that close to a still. But it will only ignite with an ignition source and the relevant ones are sparks from electric switches or flames if the boiler is heated with fuel. Alcohol vapour is heavier than air, so if alcohol spills on the floor, vapour will form above it and creep along the ground, rather than rising up into the air. When it meets a source of ignition close to the ground, it will, not may, but will, ignite. With fuel-fired stills, the risk is obvious, and this tends to mitigate the danger. Also, fuel-fired stills are often run outside, where fire, if it occurs, is less destructive. Perhaps the more insidious risk is electric sparks. Occasionally these can occur from static, but more dangerous than that are sparks that arise from electric switchgear or plugs and sockets. Boiling rings like this one, and many others of similar designs, control their power by switching the heating element off and on intermittently, with a duty cycle that is controlled by a knob on the front of the housing. That knob controls the position of a bimetallic strip that acts as a thermostat that switches the heating element on and off every few seconds. Every time it switches on or off, it produces a spark in the switch. Those sparks will ignite ethanol vapour, and appliances like this have no protection against inflammable gases entering the casing. Once lit, the flame will rapidly spread to cover all of the ethanol on the floor, and as it burns with a hot flame, it will ignite any other flammable materials in the vicinity. I wonder how this happened. Plugs and sockets like this generally do not spark, though the switch will spark when turned on or off. As they are usually being used for quite high power settings for boilers, sparks can be generated by imperfect and variable contact between the plug pins and the socket springs. To avoid fire, it is insufficient simply to avoid spilling alcohol on the floor or avoid electrical sparking, because no measures to avoid these things are absolutely foolproof. We therefore want to avoid both, so a fire would require more than one safety system to fail, making it correspondingly less likely. Electric heaters like this should be avoided. They're not much good anyway, because usually the cycling rate is so slow that they cause noticeable fluctuation in the vapour output from the boiler, which ruins attempts to get precise control of a still column. If a system like this must be used, then it should be internally rewired to remove the thermostatic switch and then controlled remotely. Generally though, it's going to be easier to use immersion, band or induction heaters. Whatever the heating system, it should be controlled remotely, without switches close to the boiler or floor. Any switches that are used should be solid-state switches like triax or sealed relays that do not allow atmospheric gases to access the switch contacts. Boilers should also be earthed, partly as that's required for electrical safety regulations, but also because it prevents static sparks. Plugs, sockets and control systems should be mounted at desk level or higher, so that any mishaps that do occur leading to sparks are not immediately in the path of vapour from spilled alcohol on the floor. Regarding spills, look at this setup and we can immediately see what's wrong. Well, two things that are wrong. The receiving vessel is not stable but perched at an angle, and it's also too small for the size of boiler, though it is some way to the side of the boiler, which is good. In general, the receiving vessel should be generously large, even if quite small cuts are being taken, so that even in the event of the operator being distracted, it won't overflow. It should similarly be stable, out of the way of being kicked or pulled over by electric cables or cooling water hoses that are very prone to being tripped over. So, if you do get an ethanol fire, what do you do? Specialist fire extinguishers with alcohol-resistant foam are not usually a realistic option for domestic environments, but water does work. It mixes with and therefore dilutes alcohol, reducing the flash point, and it also saps heat. 
Another good reason for having electrical switches or plugs above ground level is that you don't want them swimming in a lot of water should a fire have to be extinguished. So have a hose handy. The cooling water outflow from the condenser will serve at a pinch and is always available. Do not store quantities of product close to an operating still, especially not in flammable containers like plastic cans. This can lead to a fire getting out of control in no time. Safety isn't difficult. It's just a matter of giving some thought to what the risks are and taking steps to minimise them before, rather than after, an accident occurs.